there friends and subscribers welcome back to daniel's tech world here on youtube my name is daniel rosal this is my tech account on the internet and i'm going to do today a video about taking a twitter archived x or well it's now called x of course uh but folks who are uh have been watching some of my previous videos know that i'm very into uh taking backups and i include in the backup process your uh, the data you commit to as uh, you know SaaS products including social networks and that if you're tweeting a lot of stuff or you're sharing images on twitter you have a follower list you have a list of accounts you're following all that is data that might come in handy at some point in the future now there's two distinct reasons where i would say the process of taking an x archive makes sense the first is your ongoing uh, backup operations if you will and I, I as i've said personally i try to do this like twice a year sometimes the truth is i only get round to it once a year which is far from ideal if this was a real backup solution rather than just a data dump uh, you could say it would be great to do a backup or pull down your data from twitter overnight but that doesn't exist. Most of these tools for the cloud providers are what what would be known in the backup world as full backups. You get all your data and you can put it away somewhere, but it's better than nothing. So here is how to do this. Uh, the main focus of today's video, or the reason I'm making this actually, is to show you guys what you get from X when you do this process. Uh, and I would say that if you're looking at doing a uh, adding a particular SaaS tool to your cloud backup pool, the first thing you want to do is inspect what you get. Don't just download the backup or the archive and say, great, I'll put that on my NES, I can forget about it. You want to know what's in there because the only way you're going to know if you're uh, well protected is if you know what, what they actually give you. So here's the process, it's pretty simple. When you're logged into X, you click on more. Sorry, I was gonna say, I forgot one thing. My uh, thoughts are a bit discombobulated this morning. The other reason when you would do this is, and this is actually the reason I'm doing this, is if you're looking at leaving the network, right? You're done with X, you're done with Reddit, whatever the case may be, and you want it, I would recommend that's an important time to pull down your data. So anyway, here's the process. Click more settings and privacy, your account, download an archive of your data, you'll request an archive, and it takes Twitter up to a couple of days, I found, to do your stuff, because they're going to actually kind of run a script on your account that packages it up nicely uh, for download. So expect to wait a day or two. There is a couple of two-factor authentication steps involved here. Uh, so now let's get to the important part of this video. What do you get and how can you access this information? So I've just unzipped this file. It's a, it's a zip download and it was about 1.6 gigs for me. Um, and you'll notice that the archive, that, and this is obviously only um, the information that I'm talking about here is the 4th of February, 2024. Uh, it can be expected that Twitter may tweak this archiving process and change the way they lay out the information. So this is really only on today's date. So you'll notice that when I've unzipped it, I have two folders and one HTML file. The first one is called assets and uh, there's nothing really that is, uh, I would say, important. It's not really, it's not your data essentially. All your data is in this data folder. But you notice as well, there's a HTML file, which is actually something that Twitter do to help you navigate through this data. So let's just take a look quickly, firstly, at what's in the data folder, because this is one way you might want to navigate the archive. And we can see that there are that there are folders here at this level. And we can kind of tell from the folders what we're going to get. So take a look at this one, deleted tweets media, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you tweeted something, you del you subsequently deleted the tweet, there was an image in it, and you guys can really see just from looking at this, the internet never forgets. Uh, even when you delete tweets, the photos may be gone from Twitter, but they're still being registered by Twitter, right? Uh, which is a little bit, uh, I would say it's uh, it's decent that they give this out to you, but it's also a little bit concerning. Uh, you, so you really have to be careful what you tweet. So you can see I tweeted some uh, screenshots from news articles and something about optical media. Anyway, those are all preserved in that folder. Uh, so wonderful. So we have all these different folders with our tweet and tweet media would be the big one. That is stuff that you that you tweeted uh, and the photos and the videos that go along with that. Now, from what I can see, it's JPEG, JPEG, JPEG. Here we go, MP4. So you actually have your, uh, you can see this MP4 file here. So basically whatever you tweet and you can see that this is why 
the archive is going to get into the gigabytes because the longer you've been on Twitter, the more times you've tweeted photos and videos, the bigger that archive is going to get. So after the folders, we have a bunch of uh, JSON files, um, which is basically going to be just data. And this is actually where you're going to be able to see some stuff that I would say, if you're quitting, if you're quitting Twitter, you might want to say, well, I would, I would like to remember who my followers were because maybe I can follow them elsewhere. So you can go down here and you can see there's two JSON files, one called followers.json, one called following.js. So I'm going to look for the follower file and you can inspect this just in a text editor. I'm using a mouse pad here on Ubuntu, but uh, use whatever you want. I'm just having a peek inside my followers folder here. Uh, we can see that it's not really the most easy thing to read through. You can have the account ID of the people who were following me and you have a link to their user page. So it doesn't have their like their name or whatever and it's not formatted in something that's very easy to understand. But you know, if you were so motivated, you could follow through each of these links uh, to go back to the users and remember who they were. If you wanted to export your followers in a more user-friendly format, I would say go on to your followers when you're logged into Twitter and then just like export that as a PDF or some other method. So this is why I say it's vital to inspect the archives that you're getting from these services because you'll see the strengths and weaknesses of these uh, of these things as actual uh, utilities potentially. So now I'm going to click on your archive.html and I'm going to open it in a web browser. So let's take a look at the main page. Now this is pretty cool. This we're not looking here at a uh, page on the internet. This is actually something uh, a static HTML file pulled down from my local machine. So you have firstly on the top left you have your Twitter x username and there's a nice little timestamp here for when this was generated so this is important to know it means that basically everything up to this date will be included now you have the headlines here you have okay here are my tweets i wrote ten thousand tweets uh nine thousand likes i was blocking 237 accounts this seems like a lot uh, I guess it was liberal with the block button and the 47 list so let's go into tweets and we can see uh, the archive of our tweets just remember that this stuff's all coming down from our local machine so we have on the right we can search through the tweets we can sort on them and for each tweet we're given the engagement we received or we can see the engagement we received at the time the archive was put together and there's also a tweet id so it's kind of a mixture of uh, information that's useful to you as a human and other stuff uh, like that now if you go into this tweet and i pull this up because i tweeted about uh, some of the interesting optical media I found from Amazon Japan, which I covered on this YouTube channel. So we can see here's my tweet and there's a photo. Now, the reason again I say you need to inspect this is let's see, are the photos linked? So that was not so useful. Let's go back and do open image and new tab. Now by looking at what's in the uh, the, the address bar in, uh, Google, in Chrome, I'm just gonna paste it here. This is what shows up in the Chrome address bar, right? So you can actually see that we're linking off not to the live website, not to twitter.com, but we're pulling this file directly from my local machine. Um, so let's go back to the archive. You get quite a rich amount of information uh, out of this. So you can see by clicking the profile tab here. Now I was hoping that they uh, copy the followers and following into a more friendly list, but these just link off to uh, these just link off to um, to the actual live Twitter website. So again, you kind of have to um, use that with a bit of, uh, with. you might have to do another way, or you might think of another way to do that. You have your DM history here in direct messages. You have your likes and a very easily accessible page. This is quite good too. So it's actually, I'd say the main weakness here is the followers and following. Not that the data isn't in the archive, it is, but as we saw previously, it's in a .js file that isn't really so user-friendly or intuitive for actually going through. You also have uh, more uh, information related to the account security. By clicking on sessions here or uh, logins, I can actually see where the IP address I logged in every single time I logged into Twitter. So again, the platform is is uh, collecting very, very granular information. And the, the good thing is that it's being put out through your archive. But as I said before, it is kind of a salient reminder uh, that when you are using these web platforms, all the data is being 
monitored nothing is being forgotten it's all being logged and uh, this this just uh, when you take it out you really see how much you gave so this is just my active twitter sessions or what they think was my active twitter sessions um, and you can also get the account info I'm not going to go through the rest of it because uh, some of the uh, some of the details here in the archive are private like my dm history uh, but I hope this gives you a good sense for if you're looking to leave twitter x or you are looking to and by the way if you're if you're looking at doing this process uh, because you've decided you've had enough on Twitter, which is why what I'm doing. Uh, just you need to do this before you deactivate your account. Very important. So do this. Wait to get the archive. Download the archive. Keep it somewhere safe. Then at that point you can deactivate the account. And uh, we've this way we've kind of got a snapshot really of what the account looked like at the point of that you decided to pull this out. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you want to get more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe here on YouTube. Have a great day.